<laughs> well, you know what happens. In uh, Dragon Ball, you never die long. <laughs> like Christopher <laughs> Sabat, the voice of Piccolo. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. All right. Uh, we've already talked. We've been talking to the sound people to make sure we have sweet, sweet uh, effects on our voices at all times. <laughs> or maybe not at all times. It's really at his discretion, which will probably be not at all. Because he kind of grinned and went like, Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. That's good. Oh, that's going to be perfect for when I do the combat mount. Justin? Uh, no, what, what do we want to start with? Well, I won't, uh, whatever you guys have done, uh, Stay you know, I'm going to take the rest of the panel. <laughs> You're going to take over the panel? No, no, it's okay. Well, uh, I guess we could start by saying it's Dragon Ball Z Kai panel, so we're, I guess, going to be able to talk about some of the differences between Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Z Kai, and some of the things we've done a little bit differently, and some different approaches. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Where do we want to start? Chris, you want to start the story? I'm going to start by apologizing in advance. Uh, because I have strep throat today. Woo! Oh. Oh. Yeah. You can take the when I'm just talking. I don't want to be the voice of God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. At the roundabout, to turn right. <laughs> At the roundabout, stop playing with us. <laughs> I am your father's cousin's father's father's cousin's son twice removed. Is that all? Could you show me? I see your shorts. Hey! Hey! Could you please turn off the reverb? Because I don't think people can hear us. I think they think this is a mental line. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Chris, you think something? Gosh, I'm not going to show up just to keep talking. No, no, I was going to do your voice. Oh. <laughs> and if it were actually Dragon Ball Z, I would have to still be emoting over it. Like, That's true. <laughs> can, we, can we shut off the verb on this channel? I know you're looking hard. It's like, there we go. There. There it is. There now we we're rolling. Well, it's not completely. The play, it feels like the place got a lot smaller, though. That's right. Yeah, saying. it was like we were in a cavern. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so sorry. Dragon Ball Z Kai. Um, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay, thanks. Do you have any questions? <laughs> we, there are no flaws in it whatsoever, even even beyond the ones that you found. Um, uh, it's a perfect show. Uh, I'm in it. Mostly. Being, uh, it's awesome. I hope there aren't any questions. You uh, play fewer characters this time. I do play fewer <laughs> characters this time. It's, it only made sense. Because when, like, it's not very often you get a chance to do something you did, like, ten years ago, again. And you're older and actually more responsible and not in college. Um, <laughs> and it was, it's been pretty awesome. Like, back when I worked on Dragon Ball Z the first time, there were eleven people on the cast list. Like, six of them were girls. Um, two of them were sunny straight, um, <laughs> and that's yeah! about it. Like, if it wasn't Goku, or like, Sean had a high voice, and Sunny, the voice of Krillin, had a high voice, and Justin had a high voice, I was the only guy with a low voice, so anytime there was another low voice character, the producer was like, you got yourself a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still okay, but it's kind of cool. All right, so uh, I, I actually don't think it's the, the focus is general. DBZ Kai, right? DBZ Kai. We okay. can start at the beginning, which is basically uh, as soon as Dragon Ball Z Kai started, you know, coming on in Japan, a lot of excitement started coming around uh, in Funimation, Nation. We got real excited about it, and one of the first things that happened was Chris coming uh, to me and, and and saying, "Well, so so we're going to do it this time," you know, and. That point is when John Bergmeier and Chris Abbott and myself started meeting with the marketing department at Funimation and everyone else and really started kind of trying to set the parameters of this version of Dragon Ball Z. 
And what was great was we got full support from Funimation to completely go back, start from scratch, retranslate, rewrite, stay closer to the translation, uh, not worrying so much about and I think Sean will probably talk about this in a second. But, yes, I will. Yeah, but not, not being so obsessed with trying to localize it in some kind of way or another. Uh, and so to be able to go through, and, and even, I don't know if some of you have noticed on the DVD release, we're keeping a lot of the actual original Japanese attack names for things. And so it's a much more of a purist approach, but, and again, I think Sean's going to talk a little bit more about <laughs> this, but it's just, it's so great how close we're able to keep to the original as opposed to drifting off bases. Because at the, at the start, you know, we wanted to, it, it was important that Dragon Ball uh, is treated correctly, but at the same time, it was also going to be put on TV. So there were a lot of, not debates, but rather discussions of, well, how do you handle it? There, there's this massive population of people who grew up on Dragon Ball Z a certain way, and, and I'd say half of those people wouldn't even know that it was right or wrong. You know, they wouldn't know what the story was. But it became an overwhelming decision that we absolutely had to go with what the original Japanese translation was. It was kind of a test and a, a, kind of a gamble in some ways to see if we could just put this show on the air and not have to change everything to make it uh, popular. And I think it's worked. It's apparently doing pretty well. You guys are here. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not mad at us. <laughs> Mitch, back in the, like in the early 2000s when, uh, when we had first made Dragon Ball Z and I go to conventions, I'm telling you, it was an absence of love. <laughs> Let me just put it, uh, to put it lightly. Like there were people who did not like us at all back then. They're like, why are you changing the music? <laughs> why, why is why is uh, why is Yamcha why is Yamcha cool? I mean, you know, <laughs> everyone had a problem with everything with it, but it seems like I'm getting much more positive feedback this time around, and it's been awesome. Um, before I talk about Dragon Ball Z Kai, there's one of the things that I, I've done a lot of these conventions over the last ten years. My first Comic Con was in 2000, um, and we work in the booth a lot. And you know, I'm not a theater actor per se, so. I just want to take a moment to take all of you guys in and say how much I appreciate everyone being here and just, you know, just kind of be with you guys, kind of like the, the avatar saying, you know, I see you guys, you know. <laughs> so I never really do that because I tend to lead with comedy and, and I tend to lead with, uh, with being goofy. And I, after 10 years of doing this, I can't tell you uh, how radically uh, the, the, the archetype of Goku has changed my life personally. I'm really grateful to Kira Toriyama and to all of you. Um, and you know, Chris knows my history really well, so he knows the, the, the radical transformation that has happened for me <laughs> in my life growing up Goku, so to speak, because I did a lot of growing up as Goku. Um, as that being said, thank you very much, and uh, I'm, just, I'm so happy to be here. I think we should have all along with Sean by all sitting around in a circle and putting our arms on each other. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I would love to do that with all of you until we bring him and uh, until we summon the dragon. So, as far as, I guess I'm the dragon, you know. Uh, as far as uh, what Justin said I was going to talk about, um, you know that I happen to do a lot of voice work for four kids. And in their defense, let me defend them just a little bit to say, a lot of the stuff they have to do has to do with what's called BSP, which is Standards and Practices. It's a board, an advisory board, that um, is not controlled by you guys. So a lot of the choices they have to make are based on that. So it's not like four kids is going, hey, we really want to make this as, you know, milk toast as possible. They'll send something out, BSP will say, no, you can't do that, no, you can't do this. I don't really understand the whole workings of it, but I know that their hands are tied a lot. But having gone between uh, two camps, we, we need to look at anime history in W in America, which is starting with, fundamentally, Pokemon. Oh, speaking of which, before we move forward, I need to say one more thing. Um, for all of you know, for all those of you who don't know, uh, Peter Fernandez, the voice of Speed Racer, passed away last week. Oh, and, uh, yes, he did. And that was the first anime I ever saw. And so, for those of you who are Speed Racer fans or anyone else, if you'd like to take a moment of silence for Peter Fernandez, I had the pleasure of meeting him once, and I'm sure some of you have uh, a huge influence on me. So, uh, just a moment here from Peter. 